All right, Raf Giallo here from the RT Soccer Podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by Louise Quinn, Ireland defender, who is going to be on punditry duty for our coverage of Euro 2022, which begins on the 6th of July. Uh, Louise, first off, before we get into the tournament, I think uh, congratulations are in order. Great win in Georgia, 9-0. I think it's more than you can ask for, really. But, you know, when we look at the qualification campaign for the World Cup as a whole and, you know, the challenges you faced, obviously, Georgia, it's a different time type of game from the challenge you face against Finland and, and Sweden is the kind of the proudest thing with the group is it the kind of adaptability and the tactical kind of nous that you've had to find facing all these different types of challenges yeah I think so and that's something that we've yeah, maybe struggled with a bit in the in the past I think you know you always and I think we always have been you know try to be defensively sound um you know trying our best not to not to concede so many goals and are very good at frustrating teams and holding them off. But then, yeah, we needed that kind of, you know, that uh, attacking ability to be able to, to go forward. Um, and I think exactly that, I think we're really showing that in, you know, in this group, um, you know, obviously the, the results against Georgia, you know, are, are brilliant, but we, it's, you know, and it's, I think for the development of the game as well, it has been spoken about, you know, you don't, you don't really want results like that in a, you know, in kind of group stages in these tournaments, but, you know, for us personally, we've got to, we've got our own kind of barriers and steps we need to overcome. And that's, you know, at times, you know, being consistent with, with scoring goals. But I think this campaign we have showed it, showed it, and we've showed it against many teams and we've even showed it against some of the, the top teams now as well, that it's not, you know, we're not holding out for that, you know, for a, for a nil all or just, you know, just to try get through it. We, we want to go and attack and be on the front foot. We know we still have, you know, ways to go um, against some of those bigger nations that showed against Sweden. But then, you know, we're, we're being very, uh, you know, creative and I suppose ruthless then again in front of goal when it comes to the likes of Sweden that was, you know, off a set piece, we know, we know what we do, we know what we're doing, we know how to set it up. And then we have the girls who are, who are able to execute us. And, you know, when you have the likes of, as you've seen, Megan Connolly or, or Katie McCabe on a ball, they know how to deliver, they know how to shoot. Um, Denise O'Sullivan knows how to get in every single pocket that's available, um, you know, on the pitch and to kind of guess, yeah, players that can go forward like that. And that, you know, as, as defenders then, it, it just helps. It takes, it takes away some of that, that pressure as well. Um, you know, to, to not, you know, you always want to keep a clean sheet and, and concede as, as little goals as possible. But now there's, you know, we know that we have, we have so many options going forward and it's, uh, I think it kind of brings, yeah, a real kind of balance to the team. Yeah, when we were previewing the, the Georgia game with Lisa Fallon, she kind of mentioned the conditions were always going to be a challenge, hence why you did the training camp in Turkey, just to get used to the heat. But then the noticeable thing when the game was kicking off was the, the state of the pitch. And it looks bad. It looked bad on TV, but I don't know, perhaps it actually didn't look, <laughs> it wasn't as bad actually playing on it. So how did you adapt to that particular challenge? Yeah, I think that was, you know, looking, yeah, trying to trying to guess the weather when it comes to it. But, you know, yeah, Georgia, it, 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 for even during the day of the game, it was, it was above 30 degrees. It did, but we were, we were due a lot of thunderstorms and a lot of rain. And actually, thankfully, during the game, um, there was supposed to be a, a thunderstorm, but it, it thankfully didn't, uh, didn't happen because it, it would have, it would have really turned the pitch. There was definitely, you know, there was definitely a couple of bad patches, um, two, two noticeable ones. Um, and then obviously the goal mouth was was quite difficult, but to be honest, it was it was still as you can see, it was still a very playable pitch. Um, something that, again, I think as as Irish players, we've we've been there, done that, and and adapt quite quickly. And there's no point in in dwelling on it. So you know, it was it was mentioned. We uh, so we didn't go to the the pitch um, the day before the game just for the training session, just because of, you know, the, the travel was very, very difficult, um, you know, to get there. And uh, yeah, so it was just something that we were, we were easily able to adapt to. And, and yeah, there, I think it looked like there was patches, I think on the, you know, looking at the, the TV coverage, but it really, you know, it, it, it wasn't too bad. And, and uh, you know, we were well able to kind of get past. I think, thankfully, it was a, probably the best time of year to maybe play in Georgia. I think if we played there, 
in the original September, potentially it could have been, again, it could have been very, you know, very difficult, but this is, yeah, the team is, is, is well able to adapt and, and change to these, these scenarios. Yeah, you mentioned the set piece thread. Obviously, it was uh, the source of uh, both of your goals and actually many of the goals that were scored. And obviously, it's massively important. But at the other end, of course, maybe it's not as apparent against Georgia. Um, but as we've seen with against Finland and Sweden, the defensive stability you've been able to find has been quite impressive, regardless of the personnel that have been there. You've been kind of a linchpin of the defense, um, as has Diane Caldwell. And, you know, there's been a, you know, there's, even regardless of who comes in, you seem to have the system sort of set in stone. Yeah, I just think the the type of defenders we have, we are, we all have, you know, kind of our, our similarities um, in terms of, I think, kind of just keeping the unit together. I think it's really important to kind of get get your line set, know when, you know, a player maybe needs to step, you know, step forward to a ball. We need to maybe drop back and kind of just slow the play down Um, you know, kind of just drop and, and send to the pitch, then just, just protect the goal. Um, and I think that's something... Yeah, that kind of myself, Diane and Neve have, you know, have really kind of pushed towards. Obviously, Savannah McCarthy was in there as well, um, you know, and just kind of for I suppose the three of us, yeah, playing, you know, playing that game the other day, the yeah, you know, the amount of caps between us, you'd hope, you know, that we that we have some a good a good understanding. But I think it's really just coming coming to the forefront now, um, you know, about again just the experience that Neve Fahey has, the the quality of team she's played with, and now. I think especially Diane, she's always played at such a a high level in uh, in in Norway and then in Germany for so many years. But now she's had the experience of playing in America and playing, you know, with with United uh, again. So that that speed of play that kind of happens in the WSL, I think we're all very aware of. And for me, it's that's the top league. And you know, so if you can kind of prove yourself against some of those players in that league um you know and then kind of bring it together on the on the international stage then you know we're we're in a good place and yeah it's just it's it's a it's a joy to kind of play with them and and we have we have a real understanding of each other yeah and you found squad depth of course as well the likes of Lily Ag have come in and contributed well and then you know someone who was very familiar to the scene previously Stephanie Roach being brought back in after great form with P-Mount and especially with her recall um, as a squad like in terms of the message that kind of sends uh, and how positive that is uh, like what did you take from that? Yeah again just still being able to bring experience to the team players who know how to how to manage games and and win games um you know lily yeah again has been has been a really good addition and she's very she's very aggressive she's very um she definitely has kind of a yeah like a, an extra kind of defensive defensive mind as well she's you know yeah she's she's not as she's not as tall as me but she's she's brilliant in the air as well getting you know some of those defensive headers in and and uh, yeah, has really kind of, you know, marked a place, you know, in the squad and and then that's it. Then Steph coming in, she's been doing brilliant with P-Mount and again, just having that experience. Because again, there's some of the, you know, the, the strikers and our attackers, it's that that's still something that we're, that we are working on or in terms of just having, you know, more experience of how to put those kind of games to bed. And and again, Steph, Steph shows that and, and brought that to the training camp again this week and she's, you know, she was, she was, she's very, very good at just linking in play. So again, just having someone in camp who's been there, done it, um, you know, is, is, is just essential for, you know, for those young players, you know, Jessu coming in, obviously Abby Larkin as well, absolutely, you know, thrilled for her to, to get that goal. And, you know, hopefully that's again for her just to, to step on now and, and see that, you know, that's, it's a position as well. That's, that's really up, up for the taking and, you know she's so young, so she has you know so much so much time now to kind of of learn and, and to learn. So you hope, yeah, she just she'll she'll enjoy that moment. And you could yeah, you could see it all over her face. To be honest, it was it was brilliant. Yeah, and um, Finland next, and then Slovakia all both in September, um, kind of back to back. And obviously with, uh, I think as Vera Pau said in the, immediately after, immediately after the game that, you know, I think with the maths being correct, a victory over Finland and you qualify for the playoffs. Um, in the dressing room in Georgia, do you, do you almost immediately flick the switch and like compartmentalize that game that's just happened and you're almost already as a group kind of thinking, thinking ahead to September? Um, 
Yes and no. Um, you know, I think we just we just enjoyed that. Um, we enjoyed that victory a lot, and you have to you have to take the, you know, all of the, the the little wins from that. And there was uh, there were so many. Obviously, Ni Fahi first goal, Abby Larkin first goal, um, you know, hat trick from Casey. Um, you, you know, Megan just, you know, absolutely just taking control of that game and just you know being the yeah the puppet master, the conductor, everything we were calling her. Um, you know that night she was she was just brilliant. So for us, we've we've got to take yeah take those take those little wins and then you know you do you do then think forward. You're kind of like right, let's bring this moment, this good energy, just into the next camp. That's you know and and it's it's regardless of sometimes who you're playing, but just to to take that feeling, I guess, and just bring it into bring it into the next camp. And because we know that that's yeah that's it's motivation for us and it's. You know that's they're the feelings you want in football, um, to be honest. And so again, if we can if we can do that against Finland at home, um, you know it would be it would be a dream, really. Yeah, and you're going to be on punditry duty for RTE for Euro 2022, and a lot of the uh, some of the teams in the tournament you've obviously mixed with very recently got a great result in Sweden, beaten Finland, and you know when you look at the tournament, and I guess with the punditry eye now, and also at the same time being somebody who's going to be playing Finland again, do you look at it as sort of a stage that you're pr- you're proving that this is a stage that Ireland should be on at the level that you've reached and the level that I think there's almost more progression still to go as well yeah absolutely and obviously there was that that disappointment in in the last group but again I think we just showed that little bit of um inexperience and just the mentality towards us um and I think it it has hopefully made us better for us I think I think it has I think mentally we uh were able to kind of yeah handle just these situations and play these teams now with yeah may, maybe it is less pressure I suppose personally it's that kind of feeling after you know kind of the Ukraine game and and not uh yeah not not qualifying for me it kind of it I don't mean it in the dramatic way but it kind of doesn't get worse to be honest or like it can maybe but that was that was a low you know a low time for the squad we really thought and we did we had the talent there but we just needed that extra something to to take it over the line and you know, we, we missed out on that. But then from that experience, I think it's now, you know, everyone has, everyone kind of keeps that in the back of their mind and just, you know, not wanting to kind of go through that again. And, you know, that kind of the, the football, the sporting kind of suffering that was, that was led from that. So, um, yeah, so now we kind of get to, to watch on in the tournament again. I think, you know, everyone's going to be, as we were saying, it's just such a, it's such an exciting group of teams to be able to watch but again yeah we'll definitely be kind of doing our, our bit of homework and I think that's it we all love to play the game but then we love you know love watching it and then there's especially some of us who are you know love kind of the coaching or analyzing side of it as well so you're going to look that little bit deeper into yeah into how they're playing but yeah I'm definitely going to be you know doing my homework on the you know on the on the fins and then obviously potentially um you know we can we can do a job there. 